Are DNA kits useful in providing actionable info and any thoughts and information on using genetic testing to guide nutrition and exercise? I assume they're talking about like 23andMe, that type of um, SNP testing. Whenever someone gets one of these tests, it tends to spit out a lot of information. Like you're at increased risk of heart disease, you're at increased risk of diabetes. I, I, I think this is an area where I probably differ from a lot of the current crop of people who love precision medicine and that I don't find that information very helpful. I think that if you go deep enough on the phenotypic side, you will get that information and you will get it in, a, in, in an even better way and you will have a metric with which to track as you try to reverse the process. So taking diabetes for an example, does it help me to know that someone has a genetic predisposition to type 2 diabetes? Not nearly as much as it helps me to know, while they are still non-diabetic, that they have hyperinsulinemia. And even if they don't have it while fasting, to know that they have postprandial hyperinsulinemia, it's very important. To look at other subtle markers of insulin resistance, the elevation of ferritin, some of the other things that we see, other patterns of glucose disposal, these things matter a lot more. Frankly, just wearing a CGM and knowing over the course of months, how your glycemic response is. That is orders of magnitude more insightful and perhaps more importantly, more actionable. Um, so I think the one place where I do think that the genetic information can be somewhat helpful is with Alzheimer's disease. I do think that knowing your APOE status is quite an empowering thing. I think truthfully, I don't think it should change that much of what we do. Um, in other words, even if you have an APOE3 or an APOE2, which would be a much lower risk gene, I wouldn't let that information in any way, shape, or form distract or detract me from taking an all-hands-on-deck approach to avoiding dementia. Uh, as Richard Isaacson said when we had him on the podcast, if you have a brain, you're at risk of Alzheimer's disease. Thank you for listening to today's sneak peek AMA episode of The Drive. If you're interested in hearing the complete version of this AMA, you'll want to become a member. We created the membership program to bring you more in-depth exclusive content without relying on paid ads. Membership benefits are many, and beyond the complete episodes of the AMA each month, they include the following. Ridiculously comprehensive podcast show notes that detail every topic, paper, person, and thing we discuss on each episode of The Drive. Access to our private podcast feed. The Qualies, which are a super short podcast, typically less than five minutes, released every Tuesday through Friday, which highlight the best questions, topics, and tactics discussed on previous episodes of The Drive. This is particularly important for those of you who haven't heard all of the back episodes. It becomes a great way to go back and filter and decide which ones you want to listen to in detail. Really steep discount codes for products I use and believe in, but for which I don't get paid to endorse and benefits that we continue to add over time. If you want to learn more and access these member-only benefits, head over to peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe. Lastly, if you're already a member, but you're hearing this, it means you haven't downloaded our member-only podcast feed where you can get the full access to the AMA and you don't have to listen to this. You can download that at peteratiamd.com forward slash members. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all with the ID Peter Atia MD. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast player you listen on. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. Mm -hmm.